into their television. Man, I'm going to tell y'all something. I watch some folks, well, I just don't make all that noise. I'm that kind of a person. Then make sure you don't make it on the basketball court. Yeah, yeah. Got to watch folks. Yeah, yeah. I know. I don't make all that noise in church. That's not me. Well, make sure you don't make it in the stadium. Amen? Man. I, I did it for years, sit back yelling at the idiot box. Amen. See, yelling at the television, the television can't yell back. Amen. Worshiping the God of sports. Nobody ain't going to say nothing to here today. And we ought to have people shouting just because. I spent a whole year showing you that the NFL was fake. It was rigged all the way down to the end. Some folks, we don't want to hear the truth. My man, the truth is too bright. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise today. Amen. I don't know about Super Bowl Sunday, but it's a Super Sunday That's because right. our God lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, somebody give God some praise. Somebody ought to magnify the name of the Lord. Pastor, I ain't grow up in church. I don't know what to say. If you don't know what to say, just say hallelujah. That's the highest praise. That's the highest praise. That's the highest praise. Magnify the Lord with me. Come into his court. Oh, come on, somebody. In his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Know ye that the Lord God is he. And he is God all by himself. Somebody ought to glorify and magnify his name. Amen. Man, you know, I, I love this church. Let me tell you, I, because you never know what's going to happen here. Y'all think the church, this is never, come on, how many of y'all know this is never normal church? Amen. I don't know who told y'all church was boring, because not this one, amen. Right. We, uh, we start off nice and quiet, and we celebrate birthdays and all the normal things and the ushers and all that good stuff. And by the time we get finished, we hear demons screaming. Amen. By the time we get finished, yeah, we hear devils run. Other churches are called the police. <laughs> Call the ambulance. Yeah. But that sounds like music to my ears. You ever watch me? I smile and get to laughing when I hear the devil scream. Because I see the hell he put his God people through all week long. And after he done made you scream and have headaches and stressed out, you ought to be glad when you can hear the devil on the run. We're going to preach, by the way. Welcome to the world, church. Amen. Now listen, there's a lot of folks got different things going on that's missing today. Amen. I'm, I'm not even going to blame it on the Super Bowl. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to blame it on the rain. Amen. I, no point in telling I'm not going to blame it on the rain. But what I'm going to tell you is that I know I've, I've gotten a few calls of different people who are in and out of the hospital, family members and things of that nature. Um, and we're, we, we want to make sure we keep them in prayer. So of all the people that are missing today, I'm so glad to have you. Yeah. Amen. Look, look at each other and just smile. Come on, y'all. Amen. We ain't going dead today. Amen. Thank God got a good report. I, I think I just got a message. Good report from Brother C.D. Everything is fine with him. So if y'all don't see him over in the good time, you thought he had, went to the emergency room, but it ended up being all right. Amen. 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 And when, when he called me this morning, he said, Pastor... I don't mean to bother you, but I just need you to pray now. Amen. We're on our way to the emergency room. I said, brother, the angel's already on the way. That's right. Yes, sir. And then I got a text message that said everything is all right. Amen. Now look at somebody and tell them, don't worry. Don't tell worry. them, no, look at somebody and say, don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Who woke up this morning? Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Who woke up this morning with, with, with uh, uh, indigestion? Who was it? Heart burn. Quick. Who was it? Who was it? Last night into this morning, indigestion, heart burn. There's one. There's two. The Lord put it on my heart right now. Keep, stay flowing today. I want you to get this. Stay flowing today. Don't look at somebody else. Say, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. 
I'm going to answer the questions. For those that are here visiting, I don't know why the Lord is putting this on my heart, but that's the good news. We don't have to go by a certain program. But as I come in, I hear the Lord saying, somebody's wary and somebody's wary and tell them, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Heart, listen to me good, heartburn is a flare up of worry and fear. Sometimes it's fear, it's anger. It's fear of what you ex are expecting to happen negative. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. For those that have never been here before, one of the, our greatest teachings that the Lord has given us is we've been teaching the roots to sicknesses. Amen. So we're not just, you know, drugging ourselves, but we understand that these things are caused many times by how we feel. I just got to say this today. Uh, the indigestion, the heart burn, it's wary. It's wary. I don't know what are you wearing. Uh, come on, one more time, because I believe, and y'all said, Pastor, we already said it four times. Listen to me. I believe that, that, that faith come by and we hear so much negativity, that is why we are so stressed and worry. Because, because all we hear is worry. Give me Matthew 6 while I'm talking. I got, I'm going, listen, for those that are here visiting, don't worry. Uh, uh, we're, we're subject to change directions at any time. Isn't that good? Amen. Isn't that good? Now, let me just say this. Uh, uh, the, the enemy is mighty funny how he will get us to focus. And by the way, if you're here visiting, this would be a good time for you. If you have not written down your question, you can write down anything you would like us to talk about today. You can write it down and in your program. There is a little piece of paper that says questions. You can write it down and give it to one of our wonderful ushers. And you don't, we won't even have to, we won't even say that you are the one. Are you listening? We will not say that you're the one that uh, uh, asked it. We won't put you on the spot. But we do answer live questions every service. Is that a blessing today? Yes, it is. Come on, give God some praise today for that. Yes. We got a lot to cover in a short time. Amen. A lot to cover in a short time. Um, but don't worry. That's the word today. You know, it's strange how the enemy will keep us focused on what to worry about. Did you ever notice when you're riding down the street and you see an accident? You automatically lock in to see what has happened bad. Huh? It, it becomes almost impossible not to view what's going on amen how many y'all know we just like that come on somebody amen. uh I, 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 we're going to answer the questions how many you got deacon uh about four we got four questions Five. but i, I got to share this word so we can help somebody get rid of that heartburn yes. it's on my heart about the heartburn and the indigestion the indigestion the heartburn my goodness don't worry don't worry don't worry don't worry i'm speaking it today in jesus name don't worry don't worry amen. Don't worry. I command every spirit that's causing people to stress themselves right now. I command it to be bound in the name of Jesus. I bind it up right now. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't. Don't worry. Oh, I'm saying it again. Your pastor, you're acting crazy. No, I found out if I just do what God said, stuff just happens every time. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, you, you, it's okay to smile. And I, you know, if the enemy don't want us to smile, let me say this about worry before we answer the questions. And we're not going to hold you today. We're going to let you go. Because um, I know everybody got to go worship the God of sports. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Got to worship the God of sports. Um, a man once said, I'm so sick of worrying myself. He said, I just worry all the time. He said, I'll pay somebody $100,000. I'll hire you right now if you would just worry for me. Well, somebody said, that sounds like a good idea. I'll take that. And another gentleman stepped up and said, I'll take the job. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Amen. He said, I'll take the job. He says, I will worry for you for $100,000. So the guy said, okay, you're hired. So the guy's standing around looking around because the guy waiting on his first uh uh, pavement. And the guy said, well, hold on. He said, well, what's the problem? He said, uh, how do I get my money? And the guy turned around and looked at him and said, that's the first thing you got to worry about. <laughs> Look at somebody else and said, don't worry. 
What do you worry about tomorrow for? Amen. When the Bible said, oh, no, 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 watch this, watch this. You made it through what you thought would have killed you before. Right. Somebody ought to say amen right amen. there. Today is, hold on, let me figure out how I can say this. Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. And now tomorrow has come. And you're not any longer worried about today. The enemy have tricked you to now be worried about. You got me, Matthew 6? Yeah, absolutely. Amen. In, in verse 25, somewhere up in there. Watch this. Watch this. So the enemy keeps us locked in between two slaves, uh, as a slave in between two thieves, if you will. Yesterday, the past, and the future. And how many of y'all know that when you're worrying, you're simply taking future, huh? Fear of today, and you're pushing it into your future. Amen. The heart burn, the indigestion that I feel this morning for somebody else, is coming from fear and impending doom, meaning you are constantly worried about the next bad thing that's going to happen to you. And now that I'm saying that, some of y'all don't have the heartburn this morning, but you suffer from constantly worrying about the next bad thing that's going to happen to you. Who am I talking to now? Oh, nobody? Nobody worry, huh? Yeah. Thank you, Brother Jason. Good to have you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That's what the enemy does. He causes us to be through disappointments, through the past. And then we become a slave of yesterday, a slave presently, and we are a slave of what's going to happen tomorrow. But in Matthew 25, I'm just going to say this and we'll get to the questions, all right? It's on my heart to say this because the word will heal you. I got to give you the word. I got to give you the word. My folks with heartburn, listen good. Matthew 6. 25 and about three times between 25 and 34 it says don't worry that's right do not worry Amen. now let, let me just say this in case you didn't know somebody wrote this as a question today as a matter of fact about worry let's that's one question down we're gonna just we're gonna mix that up right now let's deal with that right now worry is sin Amen. and what they asked me was what deacon where do you find that in the bible one of you all asked me, where do we get that out of the Bible? I'm getting ready to show it to you right now. Amen. Did you see it anywhere, Deacon? Amen. In the book of Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 25. Listen. Therefore I say unto you. Therefore I say unto you. Take no thought for your life. Hold on. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. Hold on. The number one things we worry about is what we're going to put on our body what we're going to eat, where we're going to live. Talking about bills, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and here's what the Lord said. If we were going to worry, which we shouldn't, we got our worry in backwards. Because we worried about clothes to put on and not even sure if our body going to be working to put on the clothes. Amen. He said, we worried about tomorrow and what's going to happen Monday morning? Amen. And you're not even sure if you're going to wake up Monday morning. Mm. You know, I like this. Church folk believe God to take them to heaven, but won't believe God to keep them here on earth. Amen. Y'all, come on, say ouch and amen. amen. I believe you can take me to heaven, but Lord, you ain't going to keep me tomorrow morning right here on earth. Huh? Read, Deacon, quick. We got to go. We got to go. It's not on... <clears throat> Nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Uh -huh. Is not the life more than me? Hold on. Hold on. Isn't life more important than what? Me. Isn't it more important that you at least wake up before you're worried about what you're going to eat? That's right. 
And the body than Raymond? If not your, listen, you worried about if you're going to be able to put on a nice jacket, nice uh, name brand outfit, and the Bible said, what if your arms don't work? <laughs> listen to the book. Verse 30, oh, 26. Come on, Deacon. Behold the fowls of the air. Uh-huh. For they sow not, neither did they reap. Hold on. But here's the other extreme. A bunch of folk that say they trust God but don't do nothing. Mm. You know the people that's waiting on the new job, but they don't put in no application. They just sit by the phone waiting on God to ring it. You know what the Bible is saying? The birds, listen, God provides for the birds. Y'all say amen? But even the bird knows he's got to go look for the worm. In other words, the bird already knows God's got the worm waiting, but all he's got to do is go and look for it. And what I'm telling you today is this. God has whatever you already, he, oh, keep reading, keep reading. I'm going to show it to you. Keep amen. reading. Uh, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather in the barns, uh -huh. yet your heavenly father feed of them. Oh, God feed them. They ain't worried. Come on. Are you not much better than they? Are you not better than a bird? Do you have more intelligence than a bird? Do you have more revelation than a bird? Mm. Come on, dear. Amen. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into his stature? Which one of you, by sitting there worrying, can change a thing that's going on? Amen. <laughs> Ouch. Amen. I'm going to show you. Come on, quickly, D. And why take ye thought for Raymond? And why you take thought for Raymond? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Come on. And yet I say unto you, what that you even say? Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Uh-huh. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, and? which today is and tomorrow is, cast into the oven. What verse you on, Deacon? Uh, still verse 30. Keep going. Shall he not much more clothe you? How much, how much more will he take care of you? O ye of little faith. Oh, watch this. O ye of little faith. That's the faith he talk about, how we can trust him for heaven, but can't trust him for earth. Mm. Come on. Take no thought. Therefore, take no thought. Saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Holy, ho, ho, ho. So in order to take no thought, you got to stop putting in you the negative thoughts and negative folks speaking around you. Man. In other words, if you got a problem worrying, stop hooking up with other folk that worry all day long. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you don't worry, you get around some folk that don't worry. Yeah. Get around some footloose people that just live, man. Yeah. Just get up, man, crack the shower open, let the water run down your back, and say, whatever come today, God's got it. <laughs> stop hanging out with people with the same mess you got. Hey, one, they tell me a story one day, said a lady, lady come, she done went to the doctor, said my husband done went crazy. Said, no, doc, the doctor said, well, what you talking about? Said, lady, said my husband done went crazy. Y'all done heard that before, haven't you? Yeah. Said the Negro done lost his mind. He said, what's the problem? He said, he keeps telling me he a chicken. <laughs> the doctor said, what you say? He said, my husband said he's a chicken. The lady said, the doctor looked at the lady and said, scratch his head. And the doctor looked at the lady and said, well, have you told him that he's not? She said, no. So then the doctor looked at her and said, well, why not? And she said to him, because I need him to hurry up and lay them eggs. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear what I just said. We already crazy and got a nerve to hang out with other folks that's in the same condition. Yeah. And what I'm telling you is, it's time to step up and go to another place around some folk that's going where we need to go that's and right. stop hanging around folk that's feeding where yeah. we're coming from. Amen. Come on, Deacon, I got to preach, man. Come on. <laughs> Wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Come on. For your heavenly Father. Hold on. So when we worry about all the stuff, what we going to wear, our hair, our clothes, our food and all that, he said, we're doing what the world do. The world acts stupid over things. Yeah. That's what he's saying. That's Keep true. going. For you, for your heavenly father, know that you have need Don't of you already things. know? He said, oh, oh, crazy man. Don't you know God already know that you need the stuff? Come on. But seek ye first. But seek ye what? First. That's the problem. I'll tell you where the problem comes in. The problem comes in is because we address God on the back end yeah. instead yeah. of putting God on the front end. Right. And when we're upset about something, it's easy to worry. I mean, I'm telling you the real. I, I worry. I struggle with it like everybody else. But at the end of the day, if I put God on the beginning of my inquiries, before I pick up the phone and call her or call him or get on there and talk on Facebook, you know, we tell Facebook before we tell God. Some 
of us can't eat a pack of M&M's unless we post it. <laughs> and I ain't, listen, y'all grown up. You do what you want to do. I, I can't tell you. I'm not telling you the Lord told me, Jay, you don't post. Do what you want. But I'm just telling you, all things are lawful, but not always expedient. That's right. You gotta watch everything you do. You go right, and I'm guilty. First thing I do in the morning, grab the phone. How many of y'all do that one? As soon as you wake up, bam, you grab. I mean, you reach for it like, and man, don't let that phone not be in arm's reach when you wake up. Yeah. You get frantic. That's my alarm. <laughs> I'm guilty, man. I'm guilty. My phone is a god. Yeah. See, we don't like that. No, it's not. Why is not? You went to the phone before you even said good morning to your wife, to your husband. Went to the phone before you said, hello, Jesus. Went to the phone before you washed your face. Went to the phone. I mean, come on, somebody. This is your God. As soon as you click on the phone, it's got a bunch of mess that's going to start my day off in unbelief and have me worrying all day long. Nobody ain't talking to me today. I didn't mean to talk about this. I didn't know we would have this many people here today, even though we're missing so many. It's going to be good that I get to talk about the Jezebel spirit today. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Don't you leave early. We'll know that you're running. <laughs> I just don't. But guess what? I got a good old surprise. We ain't going to just talk about Jezebel. We're going to mention Ahab. Amen. I know y'all get so excited when we deal with that. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Say amen. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, before we get out of here, we're going to pray for the indigestion. We're going to pray for it. We're going to pray for it. Before I do, is there anybody right now that's feeling it even more? I want to thank the Lord, too. Let's just thank God for those who come all the way from Tidewater today, from Maryland, and different places like that. We got a lady that come all the way from Maryland every Sunday. Tidewater. And, and then when we're blessed to have visitors, I'm so glad because... Our own Warfare Wednesday folk, they just keep coming, they keep coming, and, and God is great, amen. Good to have Brother Rip, y'all, y'all ever hear me say Brother Rip? What's up, man? I keep saying Rip on there, that's Brother Rip, when y'all, that's the, the world famous Brother Rip, right there, y'all. Good to have you with me. And last but not least, we do thank God for, uh, we're so blessed, Sister T.T. from Warfare Wednesday, got her mother with her today, I believe it is. Let's just thank the Lord, come on, welcome her today, y'all. Make her feel like this is the right place right now. You could be anywhere, but you're hanging out with us. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. We real. We, it is what it is. We, we're a different kind of church. Amen. Right. Amen. One thing I won't deny, when they said we're strange, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Nothing normal about this church. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. You come in here, you might come in with cancer and leave with nothing. Amen. Come in here depressed, you might leave with joy. Yeah. Yeah. Come in here messed up in the mind, and God will give you a sound mind. So if you want a normal church, y'all can have it. But God, whatever you do, don't take your spirit away from us. Amen. All right, Deacon, let's get this unorganized thing we do here called church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We don't have anything. We get ready to do a building thing next week. We're gonna put out there. Get ready to look for the building church. We don't have a committee. Nothing. We don't got nothing. We just all over the place. Trusting God. Amen. 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 Trusting Him today. Amen. Amen. All right. How many you got? Uh, about five or six. Here we go. <laughs> now I'm gonna try to con listen. Please oh, don't don't do not judge me for our limited information because we cannot spend an hour on five questions. Or we would be well into the second quarter. <laughs> y'all get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So I, if y'all would listen quicker, then I don't have to talk as fast. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, Diggy. Amen. Okay, Pastor. We heard your advice to men looking for a woman. Now what about the ladies? Laughing out loud. We want to post on Facebook, too. I thought that the brother that wrote me last week was saying that I'm always getting on the young men, but I see y'all tossing it back and forth here. So uh, last week, I was asked to give straight advice as a big brother to men looking for women. And I posted yesterday on there something simple. We did, how many of y'all remember we talked about more than that? We talked about, how many, let's see who paying attention. What is the thing you ought to look for before you marry somebody? You want to be what? A friend. A friend, you got it. 
And we talked about why a friend is so more important than just a title. And that a friend actually goes further, watch this, a friend actually goes further than a husband or a wife or a mother or a father. Because you'll share things with a real friend that you would never tell your mama. That's right. And that's why what happens as husbands and wives, this is a little recap, what happens with husbands and wives is we spend our time talking about, you're supposed to cook. You're, you Ain't you a wife? You the man, you know, we don't say man, you know, get, get your black woman, she said, you the man, won't you go out there and provide? <laughs> you're supposed to do it, you're my, and we put the title, we put the title over the friendship. Yeah. And whenever you put a title in there, there's a sense of, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? No, expectation, but there's another word that's better than that, of, of entitlement. And so when your husband do provide or try to provide, you don't even appreciate it because you expect that he's supposed to do it. Yes, we're supposed to do it, but how many of y'all know at any given time, anybody can? And that's what happens to our marriages. Somebody stop doing what they used to do. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk back to me. What is the advice I have? Now, I gave advice last week about men looking for, for gals. Now we got to do something for the ladies. And I, I'm going to give quick advice because I don't have time to do a single teaching. I told the men, find you a woman that's hard to get, easy to please, and stop getting the ones that's easy to get. That'll preach. All right, ladies, I'm going to give it to you straight. And I'll see if I can't find a quote that we can take with us. Some quick advice. In order to understand what you need out of a man, you need to understand who you are as a woman. If you don't know your nature as a woman, then you'll never know what to look for in the nature of a man. The nature of a man is to create. A nature of a man is to produce. You need to know this, ladies. He said, well,